Yo, what, what, what up? It's Razor Pabla. What do you think is uh, uniquely Malaysian about this film? Um, I don't know. I thought I thought most of the stuff was uniquely Malaysian. Um, perhaps the uh, well, the Manglish. Um, slightly different. I found out from Singlish. Yeah, Manglish is different. Um, also, I think the department store scene. Um, I found out that some people outside of Malaysia don't really get it uh, because everyone is so hardworking in other countries. And we, we 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 take things a bit, you know, we, we relax a bit sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes we take it too far. But anyway, these things, I mean, it's, they're exaggerated. Um, and I guess that's yeah. I don't know. Everything else seemed to me to be uniquely Malaysian, but yeah. <laughs> how how do you choose your cast? Maybe they chose me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I worked with Jerica before uh, on a short film called Girl in a Soap Bubble. Um, we we found her through just open casting, and I had auditioned a few people before her. But when she came in, uh, she read the script and she got it 100%. I didn't have to give any direction at all, and it was amazing because I thought this girl she can read a script, read between the lines, understand the subtext. I don't have to give any directions, and she got it, and she did very very well. Um, you wouldn't be able to recognize her in that short film. It's completely different from her in real life. So when I wrote the script, as I started writing it, I began to realize, well, you know, Jerica would be a perfect person to play this refugee pong. So then I continued to write it for her. So yeah, and then I, I asked her, and then she says she was in the UK at the time, and then she says, well, great, you know, uh, she would she would read the script, she liked the script, and so she came back to do it, and she's been stuck in KL since. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she lost a work permit, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, she's happy. You know, I mean, she's happy living in Malaysia, but she was she wanted, she wanted to try something in the UK. Um, Peter, I actually tried very hard to find an actor to play uh, Peter's role, uh, the role of Eric Dunn. Um, I ask a question, as in, like, um, why, why do you particularly choose a Eurasian instead of a Malaysian? Uh, that's when I say, you know, it chose me, not the other way around. <laughs> The role was written for a Chinese guy. Originally, Eric Tan was a Chinese, pure Chinese guy. The only Eurasian in the film was supposed to be Hannah Edwards Leung, just to bring up you know, this rivalry between the two of them. Um, but I couldn't find an actor um, in Malaysia. I could not find an actor uh, who was Chinese and who could act and who could do this Manglish thing. Um, I, there are the other actors who speak very proper English. And then there are also... Um, very good Chinese actors who, who do very good Mandarin and Cantonese but I needed someone to speak English in, in this film so I, I I couldn't find anyone I actually tried I came down to Singapore as well and I met some an actor that I really wanted to work with and he was interested but then our, our schedules conflicted and so I, I, I couldn't get him um, I went up to Bangkok the accents were weird, you know, and uh, I think it was very important because there were songs to be sung, and if you sung it in a strange accent, um, that didn't fit, and yeah. And I live in a dingy apartment, and I was just driving out one day in my car, I, I saw this Eurasian guy. I said, what's a Eurasian guy doing in my part of town? <laughs> it's really weird. And he was fixing his car. And I thought, well, this guy could actually, you know, at the time, everyone I see, I put his face and see, well, into the character and see, can I try this person? So when I saw him, I said, this guy could conceivably be Eric Tan if I rethink the role uh, for a Eurasian. I didn't really want to stop and ask him because he'll think I'm a psycho, which I am. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I did, I did in the end, I did in the end because I didn't want to regret, you know, what if he turned out to be the one who could actually act. Uh, so I came, I, I went up to him and I said, you know, um, I'm, I'm casting for a film, you know, uh, can, you, can you act? He says, well, well, you know, I've not done any acting, but I'm in the entertainment industry. I said, what's that? He says, I'm a model. <laughs> and then uh, and I said, can you sing? He says, no. Um, and then I said, are you being modest? <laughs> he says, no, I really can't sing. Um, so, you know, and I, he, he seemed like a very nice guy, very pleasant. So um, then we, 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 we made him come in for a reading. And uh, yeah, um, he was such a sweet guy. 
he looks really pathetic sometimes, you know, he, because he's, he's like always tired and people bullying him. He gets that. I bully him a lot. I say that's the words spoken by the bosses uh, uh, to him, like, uh, you know, stop talking. That, that's what I say to him. <laughs> so you change your character to suit him. That's right. I, that's right. I rewrote, I rewrote his role. I rewrote his role. Um, I've, I, I've noticed that um, for me and for a lot of Malaysians, when we watch a film, and, and the actors speak uh, proper English or British accent or Australian accent, there is a bit of a turn off. Um, I don't know why. Um, there's just that, that thing. I think it distances the, 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 the audience. That's right, not native anymore. So there's a bit of that. I noticed that in, in some of the films I've seen. So I decided the best way to do it is make fun of his accent. And, and by making fun of his accent, we also feel pity for him. So hopefully we'll like his character, and at the same time we can accept the British accent. Yo, what, what, what up? It's Razor Bob, lah.